Ten-year-old Chihiro and her parents journey to their new residence. Chihiro is discontent and displeased about the move, particularly when she realizes that the bouquet her friend gifted her as a farewell present is withering. In view of their new house, they take a wrong turn and follow a rough, deteriorated old path through the woods. Chihiro glimpses a peculiar old statue through the trees as they drive by. The road terminates at a tunnel leading to an abandoned amusement park. It gives Chihiro an eerie feeling, but her parents convince her to accompany them and explore. After meandering across a grassy terrain and a dry riverbed, they ascend a stone staircase and arrive at a street lined with eateries and shops. Most are deserted, but the aroma of cooking leads them to the one restaurant that's well stocked with food, though it's inexplicably empty. Mom and Dad are hungry and begin eating, despite Chihiro's objections. The food is delectable and Chihiro wanders away to explore while they eat. She discovers a towering, elaborate building that she recognizes as a bathhouse, a spa resort. There's a train track running beneath it. She encounters a boy in traditional attire who is alarmed to see her. He tells her to depart and return across the river before it gets dark. Chihiro rushes back to her parents, but they're still eating, and they've transformed into pigs. Strange, shadowy, ghostly figures emerge in all the shops and streets, scaring Chihiro and separating her from the pigs that were her parents. Chihiro runs back to the river, which was nearly dry when they crossed, but is now full and vast, and she doesn't even recognize the structures on the far side. As a riverboat approaches, she notices that her body has become translucent. The riverboat brings a large group of individuals dressed in costume, or maybe they're not individuals. Initially, they appear only as paper masks. Chihiro believes she's dreaming, but can't awaken. The boy who warned her earlier discovers her and informs her that she must consume some food from his world or she'll vanish. He assures her that she won't transform into a pig. She ingests the morsel he provides and solidifies, but realizes she's glued to the ground until he recites an incantation to free her. A bird with a woman's head flies above them, and he conceals her, mentioning that the bird is searching for her. They dash through alleys in the pig barn to the grand bathhouse, accessible via a bridge. The boy instructs her to hold her breath as they cross the bridge, or the spell that renders her invisible will break. Customers, incredibly diverse gods and spirits, are crossing the bridge and being welcomed by bathhouse staff. Chihiro nearly makes it across entirely, but a frog that speaks to her companion, calling him Haku, startles her, and she takes a breath. Fortunately, only the frog appears to notice her, and Haku uses magic to encase it in a bubble to silence it. Haku advises her to locate Kamaji, the boiler man, and convince him to give her a job. She must have a job to remain at the bathhouse, or else Yubaba, the old witch who governs the bathhouse, will transform her into an animal. And Haku says she must stay if she wants to locate and assist her parents, who are still pigs, wherever they may be. He knows her name and claims he's known her since she was very young. Chihiro descends a steep, winding, railless wooden stairway in pursuit of Kamaji and the boiler room. When she discovers them, she observes an unusual setup where the boiler is supplied by creatures resembling spiders, delivering coal one lump at a time. And the machinery is managed by a bearded, bald man with six arms and dark glasses. She requests a job, but he responds, after grumbling about four bath tokens at once, as four red plaques on purple ribbons descend from the ceiling, that he's cast a spell on soot balls, the spider things, so he has all the workers he needs. Chihiro must keep moving to avoid getting in the way of Kamaji and the soot balls. She lifts a lump of coal that's too heavy for the soot ball carrying it, and almost too heavy for her, and Kamaji instructs her to finish what she started. Thus, she hauls it over to the furnace and tosses it in. All the sootballs pretend to collapse under the weight of their coal to avoid working, but Kamaji scolds them and Chihiro, stating that if they stop working, the spell will wear off. A young woman enters with food for Kamaji and the sootballs. The woman is startled to see Chihiro, but Kamaji claims she's his granddaughter and asks the woman to escort Chihiro to Yubaba, who will give her something to do. The woman named Lin only agrees when Kamaji offers her a roasted newt, she bluntly instructs Chihiro to leave her shoes and socks behind and to thank the boiler man. They utilize three elevators to reach Yubaba's chambers on the top floor, 
encountering many of the bathhouse's clients. Lynn refers to one as a radish spirit, between elevators. An elevator operator who hasn't noticed Chihiro informs Lynn that she smells just like a human. Lynn distracts him with the roasted newt that Kamaji gave her, while Chihiro escapes in the last elevator with the radish spirit. They arrive at a courtyard-like room with a mosaic floor and two large front doors. Chihiro attempts to open one. The door knocker chides her. The doors open, and the same voice, belonging to Yubaba, instructs her to enter. She's pulled through the house into a firelit room where several disembodied green heads bounce around, and Yubaba, an elderly woman with a huge head, works at a desk. Chihiro asks for a job, but Yubaba dismisses it as foolishness, makes derogatory remarks about her, and silences her with magic. She smokes a cigarette while considering what to do with Chihiro. She lifts the silencing spell to ask Chihiro who helped her, but Chihiro continues to ask for work, which angers Yubaba. When Chihiro persists, Yubaba threatens to give her the most difficult job until her last breath. They're interrupted when Yubaba's enormous baby, Bo, wakes up, and Yubaba blames Chihiro for it. Chihiro keeps asking for work, and Yubaba finally agrees to give her a job if she remains quiet. Chihiro signs a contract while Yubaba grumbles. Yubaba, finding Chihiro's name pretty, magically removes all but one character from her name on the contract and declares that the name now belongs to her. Reading the one remaining character of Chihiro's name, Yubaba renames her Sen. Haku, pretending not to know her, comes to show her what to do. He instructs her to address him as Master Haku. None of the workers want to take Sen into their department, complaining that she smells bad. But Haku assures her the smell will fade after three days of eating their food. Haku assigns Sen to work with Lin, who had been seeking an assistant. Lin takes Sen to their room, which they share with several others, and gives her clothing. Sen asks if there are two Hakus. Lin says no and warns Sen to be careful about what she says to Haku because he's Yubaba's henchman. Sen doesn't feel well. Yubaba transforms into a bird with a human head and flies off her balcony with a smaller but otherwise identical human-headed bird. As Sen sleeps among her new co-workers, a voice, a Hakus, says, Meet me at the bridge. I'll take you to your parents. She wakes up, dresses in her new clothes, and goes down to the boiler room where she left her shoes. When she notices her shoes are gone, the sootballs bring them out of the tunnels where they live. Sen heads to the bridge, where a semi-transparent spirit is standing. It wears a white mask and a black robe. Silently, it observes her cross. It was standing in the same spot in the middle of the bridge when she crossed the night before. Haku finds her on the other side and leads her through flowering shrubs to the huge piggery. He warns her never to come there without him. She identifies a couple of sleeping pigs as her parents and promises to help them. He returns her old clothes, which she'll need to escape, and a card with her real name, Chihiro, which Sen has almost forgotten already. She called herself Sen when speaking to her parents. Haku explains that Yubaba wields power over people by stealing their names, so she must not forget hers as he has forgotten his. He gives her something to eat, and she cries as she eats. He tries to comfort her, but eventually has to leave her at the bridge. When she turns back to look for him, she sees a dragon flying away and realizes that it's Haku. Later, Kamaji finds Sen asleep on the floor of the boiler room and covers her up. Yubaba Bird and her smaller companion fly home through heavy rain. Inside the bathhouse, Lin asks Sen where she was. Sen apologizes but doesn't explain. Sen, Lin, and other girls clean a floor until a man comes to say they get the big tub today, though the women don't usually get that kind of work. That's frog work, as Lin says. As Sen empties her pail out the garden door, she sees the silent spirit from the bridge standing outside in the rain looking in. She asks if he's getting wet and leaves the door open for him. They discover that the big tub is covered with crud and will need to be soaked before they can clean it properly. So Lin sends Sen to the foreman for an herbal soap token. Far above in her apartment, Yubaba senses something approaching. She looks out and wonders who is sneaking around in the rain. A spirit that looks like a pile of mud is making its way toward the bathhouse. The foreman refuses to give Sen a soap token, but the silent spirit provides one for her. As they fill the big tub to soak it clean, Lin says the water contains salts that are supposed to be good for you. The silent spirit approaches Sen and offers a handful of soap tokens. He's not entirely silent, 
In this scene, he makes little ah-ah sounds, as if trying to talk. When she politely declines, he seems disappointed and lets the tokens fall to the floor. She's distracted when the big tub overflows. Meanwhile, Yubaba has identified the walking mud pile as a stink spirit, though she's suspicious that he isn't really. The staff fails to ward him off, so Yubaba assigns Sen to take him to the big tub and bathe him. Sen can hardly speak because he smells so bad. He's surrounded by a pool of purple stinkiness. He gets in the big tub, which overflows with his brownish slime. Yubaba and the foreman watch as Sen tries to clean the stink spirit. She uses the silent spirit's herbal soap tokens to order some good, cleansing hot water. As Lin arrives to help, Sen feels something like a thorn in the stink spirit's side. Yubaba decides this is important and gives Sen a rope to tie to the thorn, which has a handle. With help from all the staff, they pull a bicycle out of the spirit's body, followed by an entire junkyard. When the slime clears, an ancient-looking brown face with shaggy eyebrows appears and says, Well done to Sen. He seems to disappear, leaving her with a handful of something greenish. Then he explodes out of the tub like a giant white snake, or perhaps a dragon, he resembles Haku's dragon form, and flies away, leaving lots of gold behind. Yubaba is delighted. The guest was a river spirit in distress, not a stink spirit. Sen sees the silent spirit sitting in the corner, apart from all the excitement. At bedtime, Lin and Sen sit on their balcony eating dumplings. When Sen asks about Haku, Lin says the word is he does Yubaba's dirty work. They watch a train go by on the water, or so it seems. With all the rain, the water has risen, so it just covers the tracks. Lin says she has to get out of that place. Someday I'm getting on that train. Sen tastes the green stuff the river spirit gave her, but finds it very unpleasant. That night, the frog who first saw Chihiro on the bridge goes into the room with the big tub and meets the silent spirit, who lures him closer with little gold nuggets. The spirit consumes the frog and thereafter uses his voice. He asks another employee for food and pays with more gold which seems to grow in his hands as needed. Sen takes the river spirit's gift to the piggery, thinking it might turn her porky parents human, but she can't tell which pigs are her parents. Back at the bathhouse, Lin shows Sen a lump of gold from a new guest here who's loaded. The formerly silent spirit is eating everything the staff can bring him, growing larger and uglier, and dispensing gold. Sen goes to look for Haku. A white dragon that Sen recognizes as Haku flies across the water, lands with a splash, and then seems to be attacked by white birds. Sen opens her balcony door so the dragon can fly into her room and closes the doors on the birds, which turn out to be made of paper. The dragon is bleeding, but manages to fly out and up to a higher window. Sen, concerned, follows him, and a paper bird attaches itself to her back. She encounters the formerly silent spirit, who is glad to see her and offers her gold, but she declines, and he drops the gold, which the other employees eagerly take. The spirit consumes two employees who were guiding him through the halls. Sen finds herself climbing up the outside of the towering bathhouse. She notices she has some of Haku's blood on her hand. The paper bird moves from her back to her hair, and Sen sees the Yubaba bird flying back into her rooms at the top of the bathhouse. Sen tries to get in through a window, and the paper bird unlocks it for her. She goes through a bathroom down a hall to a playroom, where the paper bird enables her to overhear Yubaba complaining about the problem guest, a no-face spirit, who's eating people, and that Haku is bleeding all over the carpet, Yubaba callously orders someone to get him out of the bathhouse because he will be dead soon anyway. Chihiro discovers the big baby, Bo, in the playroom, and he accuses her of being a germ from outside and threatens her. She shows him Haku's blood on her hand, and he lets go. Sen goes to the main room, where Haku lies bleeding in dragon form. Bo follows and demands that Sen play with him. The paper bird transforms into a woman who looks like Yubaba. She turns Bo into a mouse, when he mistakes her for his mother. She also transforms the smaller Yubaba bird into a tiny bug-like bird and turns the three green heads into a facsimile of the big baby. The woman reveals she's Zenaba, Yubaba's twin sister. She claims Haku stole her magical golden seal and she wants it back. The seal carries a curse that will kill anyone who steals it. Zenaba accuses Haku of being a thief as he plans to steal Yubaba's magic as well. Haku, despite his injuries, regains enough strength to fly them to the boiler room. Once there, 
Haku collapses. He's still bleeding. Kamaji says it looks serious, and Sen feeds him part of the river spirit's gift. He spits up Zenaba's gold seal and a black slug, and Haku changes back to human form, but he remains unconscious and ill. Kamaji reveals that Haku, like Chihiro, appeared at the bathhouse out of nowhere and changed significantly once Yubaba took him as her apprentice. He believes Zenaba might be able to help if Sen asks, though Zenaba is very dangerous. Sen agrees, saying Haku helped her and now she wants to help him. She mentions that her parents will have to wait. Lin informs Sen that the silent spirit is a monster named No-Face who has swallowed three people. Sen admits that she let him in and Kamaji gives her train tickets to go to Zenaba's house at Swamp Bottom. He says the train only runs one way now and Sen will have to walk back along the tracks. Kamaji comments that something is going on between Sen and Haku that Lin wouldn't recognize. It's called love. Meanwhile, No-Face is calling for Sen. Yubaba tells Sen to extract every last bit of gold from No-Face before evicting him from the bathhouse. Sen goes in to see No-Face, who offers her gold again, saying he's not giving it to anyone else. She tells him she wants to leave because she has somewhere important to go, and she advises him to leave too, as Yubaba doesn't want him in the bathhouse. She asks if he has somewhere to go, and he complains of feeling lonely. No Face says he wants Sen, meaning he wants to eat her. She makes him eat the remainder of the river spirit's gift, causing him to vomit uncontrollably. Sen lures him to follow her down many flights of stairs. At the base of the stairs, No Face regurgitates a couple of the people he ate, who appear unharmed. He returns to his original size. Lin arrives in a tub-like boat to take Sen to the train station. Sen asks No Face to follow them saying he needs to leave the bathhouse because it's driving him crazy, and she assures he won't harm them. No-Face spits out the frog who swims away. The train arrives, and Sen and No-Face board it, and they travel to Swamp Bottom, where Zenaba resides. Many passengers on the train are transparent, including No-Face. The transformed mouse, previously the baby, and the bug bird accompany them. The train travels over a mostly water-covered landscape. In the boiler room, Haku awakens and rouses Kamaji. Kamaji explains that Sen went to Zenaba's and that she broke Zenaba's spell, curing Haku with the power of pure love. In Yubaba's room, the disguised big baby, actually the three green heads, is eating, while Yubaba sits nearby with some of No-Face's gold. Haku enters and points out that something precious to Yubaba has been replaced. When she looks closely, the baby transforms back into the three heads and the gold turns to dirt. Haku informs Yubaba that the baby is with her sister. Yubaba asks what he wants to get the baby back, and Haku responds that she must tear up Sen's contract and allow her to return with both parents to the human world. Yubaba agrees but sets a final test for Sen, warning that if she fails, she will belong to Yubaba. Sen and No-Face disembark from the train and set out to find Zenaba. They find a dry path to walk on. A hopping lamppost guides them through the darkness to Zeniba's house. Zenaba, who still resembles Yubaba, invites them inside brusquely. She asks them to sit while she prepares tea. Sen returns the golden seal and apologizes for Haku's actions. Zenaba reveals that Haku was controlled by a slug, which Sen crushed, and explains that only love could have broken her spell. Zenaba mentions that the spells on the mouse and the bug bird have worn off, and they can transform back whenever they desire. However, they seem occupied with a spinning wheel and show no interest in changing. Zenaba tasks Sen with helping her parents on her own and advises her to remember where she first encountered Haku. Zenaba requests that Sen call her Granny and adopts a kind demeanor. No Face assists Zenaba and agrees to stay with her. Sen shares her real name with Granny and they fly away on Haku's back with the mouse and bug bird joining them. Sen recalls a childhood memory of the Kohaku River where she dropped her shoe and nearly drowned but the river guided her to safety. Haku is the Kohaku River spirit who cannot find his way home due to the river being filled in. Haku changes from dragon to human form and they enjoy free fall for a while. Sen and Haku land at the bathhouse bridge in human form. The mouse transforms back into a baby who speaks up on Sen's behalf. Yubaba insists on giving Sen the final test, though the baby objects, and Sen agrees, acknowledging that a deal's a deal. The final challenge for Sen is to identify her parents among a crowd of pigs. Yubaba explains that she only has one attempt, and if she gets it right, 
they can all go home. Sen confidently declares that none of the pigs are her parents. She passes the test, causing her contract to dissolve from Yubaba's hand. Expressing gratitude to Yubaba by calling her Granny, which surprises Yubaba as she never requested to be called that, Sen hurries away with Haku, who informs her that her parents are on the other side of the river. He instructs her to cross the riverbed without looking back until she reaches the tunnel. Haku will return to Yubaba, but now he is no longer under her control as he has regained his name. He assures Chihiro, formerly Sen, that they will meet again. Chihiro hears her parents' voices, and when she reunites with them near the tunnel entrance, they seem perfectly fine and do not recall anything that happened. They gently scold her for running off. Upon returning to their car, they find it covered in dust and leaves, as if it had been there for a long time. As they drive away, Dad expresses that a new home and school can be somewhat intimidating. Chihiro, having matured significantly since her last car ride, responds confidently, I think I can handle it. The End Thank you for watching. Please check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you next time.